This video was created by Vinylic Puma of Vinylic Puma Gaming. So there are some tough animals, beasts, and monsters in Fallout 4, especially once you get your character to higher levels. While I'd say a couple of these aren't particularly difficult to kill, there are some enemies on this list that are very difficult to kill, even with top tier weapons. Now, for this particular video, I'm going to be primarily using what I consider to be one of the best weapons available in Fallout 4, and that is the Plasma Sniper Rifle. It's possible to get up to 120 damage damage per shot with this weapon and completely gooify whatever's in front of you. Top 9 toughest creatures and animals in Fallout 4 starting now. Number 9 the Glowing Mutant Hound. So this is the stronger version of the standard Mutant Hound that can appear alongside Super Mutant enemies. The Glowing Mutant Hound has just under triple the health points of a normal Mutant Hound. Uh, they're not necessarily too difficult to take out on their own, but when they are in packs and your character is outside of power armor, Glowing Mutant Hounds can be tough to deal with. Uh, they move just quick enough to where it's difficult to score a successful hit on uh, like many other enemies and other creatures in Fallout 4, uh, glowing mutant hounds are vulnerable to the pain train skill, uh, making them somewhat more manageable if they are in a group because you can just charge in and knock them all over the place. It's possible to get mutant hound meat from mutant hounds, which when properly cooked is a very useful healing item for your character. Number 8. The Glowing Ragstag. This is another relatively easy enemy on its own, but becomes somewhat more formidable while in packs. According to the Fallout Wiki, the Glowing Ragstag has the same amount of hit points as the Glowing Mutant Hound. Uh, like the Glowing Mutant Hound, it does drop its very own type of meat, which is just Ragstag meat. And when Ragstag meat is properly cooked, it can heal 120 hit points and improve your character's carry weight by 25 points. The Glowing Ragstag is also vulnerable to the Pain Train skill, which can make them very easy to deal with while you have power armor equipped since you can just knock them around if they're in groups. Uh, just remember, you'll probably come out with only a few scratches up against this foe. Number 7, the Bloated Glowing One. I would say that ghouls in general are particularly dangerous when outside of power armor because not only do they deal more damage, but they also have the potential to deal a lot of radiation damage as well, which can limit your character's maximum health. Inside power armor, uh, they're not as much of a problem. Uh, j you won't have to worry about the radiation damage quite as much. Uh, the bloated glowing one in particular, though, is the strongest of all of the feral ghouls and is difficult to take out if it appears in groups along with other types of feral ghouls. Uh, thankfully, if you do have power armor, they are vulnerable to the pain train skill, uh, which does make them somewhat more manageable as you can knock them around. Uh, they also drop lousy items. Irradiated blood heals your character at the expense of losing your maximum health due to the radiation damage you incur. And then there's also nuclear material, which is relatively common anyway. Um, just kill this thing and pass on the items that it drops. Number six, the vampiric blood bug. So for the record, I really hate these things. They're small, hard to hit, they have attacks which incur poison status effects, and for an enemy of their size, they have a ridiculous amount of health, and because they're small, they're just, like I said earlier, hard to hit. Uh, vampiric blood bugs also can lose a bunch of limbs, and they could just keep on fighting. Uh, plus, once you reach higher levels, they become relatively common and can spawn in packs, which can definitely keep you on guard. Uh, they're the most common around like swamp areas, and I've seen a bunch of them in the glowing sea. Uh, they do drop somewhat useful items though. Uh, the first is the blood bug proboscis, I believe that's how you pronounce that, uh, which is a source of acid. And then of course there is blood bug meat, which can be cooked at a cooking station to produce blood bug steaks which heal for 105 hit points while simultaneously adding an additional 15 health points to your character's total max health. Number five, the Death Skull Rad Scorpion. This is the strongest of the Rad Scorpions in Fallout 4 and clocks in at an astounding 1,000 plus hit points. 
to put that in perspective, Mirelur Queens have about 1,000 hit points total. While Death Skull Rad Scorpions don't have quite as much armor as a Mirelur Queen, they can still deal a decent chunk of damage, even while you're wearing power armor. And really the only reason Death Skull Scorpions, Rad Scorpions, I'm sorry, aren't higher on this list is because they are still vulnerable to the Pain Train skill. Uh, as for what they drop, uh, Rad Scorpions in general can drop Rad Scorpion Stingers, which are a component in Venom Syringes for the Syringe Rifle, Rad Scorpion Eggs, which can heal the player, uh, but you also get some radiation damage, and then of course there is the Rad Scorpion Meat, which can be cooked into a Rad Scorpion Steak, which heals your character for 150 hit points and adds 25 points to your energy resistance stat. Number 4, the Dusky Yao Guai. Like with the Death Skull Rad Scorpion, this is the strongest Yao Guai variant and also clocks in at over a thousand hit points. Like other Yao Guai, Dusky Yao Guai are particularly dangerous to their massive attack damage. Uh, they may not have quite as much armor as a Rad Scorpion, but Yao Guai can easily kill you if you're outside of your power armor. Even while in power armor, their attacks can take a significant amount of your health, even with really good fully upgraded power armor. Uh, thankfully, a Yao Guai's Achilles heel is that they are still vulnerable to the Pain Train skill, so you can knock them around a little bit. Yao Guai can also drop Yao Guai meat, which can be cooked into two different recipes. The first is Yao Guai ribs, which heal for 164 hit points and add plus 15 to your damage resistance stat for one hour. And the second recipe is the Yao Guai roast, uh, which also includes and requires additional ingredients, which are one carrot and one tato fruit. Uh, and basically the Yao Guai roast's effects are that it heals for 210 health points, hit points, and improves your melee damage by 10 points for one hour. Number three, the Mirelurk Queen. While it has less health than the Death Skull Rad Scorpion and Dusky Yao Guai, the Mirelurk Queen has a significant amount of armor, and the Mirelurk Queen's poison attacks are quite dangerous while in and outside of power armor. It's also a large enough creature to where it's completely invulnerable to the Pain Train skill while wearing power armor as well. Uh, Mirelurk Queens also are usually accompanied by other Mirelurks of differing levels of abilities and can be quite dangerous when you're just fighting them alone. Mirelurk Queens drop Queen Mirelurk Meat, which on its own has impressive abilities, which heal your characters for 100 hit points and improve your endurance by one. However, if you cook this into the Mirelurk Queen Steak, uh, what this does is you don't get any radiation damage penalty, it heals for 200 hit points, and improves your endurance stat by 2 points for 1 hour, and is obtained simply by just cooking the Queen Mirelurk meat. So there's not really any point to just consume raw meat from a Queen Mirelurk. Number 2, the Mythic Deathclaw. Think of Mythic Deathclaws like Mirelurk Queens, except with more health and virtually no poison attacks. These things have an insane amount of armor and are also very fast and can hit like a truck. Uh, Mythic Deathclaws are the strongest Deathclaw variant and appear after your playable character has reached level 91. Um, I recommend you bring power armor and like the Mirelurk Queen, Deathclaws are completely invulnerable to the Pain Train skill. Uh, like other Deathclaws, Mythic Deathclaws can drop Deathclaw hands, which are useful to sell to vendors or scrap for both the bone and leather for resources and stuff. And Deathclaws also drop Deathclaw meat, which can be cooked to produce Deathclaw steak, which heals for 185 hit points and boosts your agility stat by one point for one hour. Number one, the Ancient Behemoth. The Ancient Behemoth is the strongest creature you can encounter in Fallout 4. It only appears after level 95 and has over 2,000 hit points. Uh, while it doesn't have quite as much armor as the Mirelurk Queen or the Mythic Deathclaw, the Ancient Behemoth hits like a truck and can stagger you even if you're wearing power armor, making it difficult to complete a reload animation. 
Like with the Mythic Deathclaw, I highly recommend you wear power armor uh, with the highest defense rating possible. Once you manage to kill an Ancient Behemoth, it can drop a wide variety of loot, including some rare items like fusion cores and some rare ammunition types like plasma cartridges, uh, two millimeter electromagnetic rounds for the Gauss rifle, and many others. Uh, the struggle to kill one of these things is definitely worth it and is very profitable for your character. Anyway guys, that's gonna pretty much wrap up this particular video. If you like this video, please be sure to leave a like. As always, take care and I'll see y'all next time.